We play and call it work. Hey folks, Janine from Mini Wargaming here with another how-to video for you. In today's video, we're going to continue painting the Scar Queen of the Broken Coast model, and we're going to do a true metallic metal process to paint up her sword. As always, if you have suggestions for what you'd like to see in future how-to videos, go ahead and leave them down below in the comments. All right, so my goal with this sword is I'm going to go all the way from black through all the metallic colors right up to a little bit of white. Now, the first color I'm going to use is going to be Abaddon Black mixed with a little bit of Lead Belcher. And that's because I already have a nice black base coat on the sword already. So this process is going to be highlighting up from black. However, you could easily start with a more neutral color and shade down. It's just whatever you prefer. The important part of the process is just making sure that you go all the way through the whole spectrum of colors, however you choose to get there. All right, so I have both black and lead belcher on my palette, and I'm gonna go ahead and mix them together. Now the black is a very powerful paint in this mixture, so I'm probably gonna go about one part black two parts of the lead belcher and then I'm going to mix a little bit of Lamian medium just so I get a good flow to the paint as well. Now I'm going to start painting this color on and I know you guys have heard me talk a lot about the idea of maximizing contrast and you're really going to see that in action on this sword. The way that we're going to paint it is it has a flat and then it also has an edge and I'm going to go all the way from black to white with all the spectrum of silver in between, but I'm gonna do that on opposite parts of the blade between the flat and the edge. So the brightest part of the flat is gonna be right next to the part that I'm gonna leave black on the edge. So they're gonna kind of be opposites and that's gonna really maximize the contrast. Now that may not be the most realistic way to paint a metallic shine. However, you're gonna see that on a mini this small, doing those little simple tricks that really catch the eye, make it stand out on the table. So for the flat of the sword, the brightest part is going to be right at the bottom. And then for the bladed edge, we're gonna do the highlight closer towards the top. We're also gonna do a little bit of the highlight on this little hook that protrudes out. So keeping that concept in mind, I'm gonna add a couple layers of this color to start to build up the shine but I wanna make sure that I leave some areas very dark so that as I start to highlight, the two contrast each other very nicely. All right, once I'm done with my black lead belcher mixture, I'm going to use the lead belcher that's already on my palette and go straight into pure lead belcher. So for the flat of the blade, I'm just starting at the bottom and building it up and blending it in very slowly to the rest of the blade so I get a nice gradual gradient. And I'm doing the same thing on the bladed edge, just in the opposite direction. It's gonna take me a couple layers of paint to get a buildup that I'm comfortable with, but I'm happier doing very small layers of paint and slowly building up the color than doing one large layer of paint. Here's the sword after we've done highlighting with lead belcher. We're gonna move on to the next metallic color, which is gonna be iron breaker. However, my first highlight with this, I'm actually going to mix my iron breaker into my lead belcher about 50-50. I'm following the same highlighting principle, just slowly starting to build up the color, starting to build up the shine. But once I'm happy with a layer of the mixture, I'm going to go into pure iron breaker and apply that to some of the same areas. You can see that I'm really painting less and less of the sword as I go through each step. Here's the sword after the iron breaker has been applied. The next metallic is of course runefang steel. And we're going to apply that in the same manner that we did with the iron breaker. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to use a 50-50 mixture of runefang steel and iron breaker. And then we're going to highlight with straight runefang steel. These highlights are gonna be pretty quick because really I'm just applying them to the very edges of the sword. Here you can see the sword after all the metallic layers have been added. You can start to see this buildup of contrast that I've been talking about. We're gonna push that even further with the next few steps. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to our Abaddon Black and we're going to paint a thin black line on the transition between the flat of the sword and the bladed edge. 
We really want this line to be thin and as it is right now, that's actually too thick. So I'm gonna go back with my metallic paints and I'm going to cover it up just a little bit because we really just want a very thin line along this edge to kind of give our eye a little bit of a cheat. We want there to be a very defined line between where the flat ends and then the blade begins. Here you can see the sword after that line has been blended in just a little bit. Our next step is going to be to add a tiny pop of color to make the blade seem a little bit more visually interesting. And we're going to do that using one of the Citadel shades. I picked Caraburg Crimson for this sword. However, this process could be done using pretty much any of them depending on the color you'd like. I'm also going to be mixing this shade with a little bit of Lamian Medium. Usually I paint these shades at the strength they are straight out of the pot. However, with this particular process, we're really just adding a very small hint of color. So we want to thin it out a little bit. And then we're just going to apply this to the entirety of the sword. We're gonna put a little bit down and then blend it around, really making sure that we get a smooth coat that adds very little paint on there. We just want a tiny hint of color and it's gonna make it pop a little bit more. It's also possible to add a little bit of mood to your miniature by changing the color of the sword too. Like a green sword has a much different kind of mood and tone to it than a purple sword. So you can use it with different armies to add a little bit of a personality to the miniature. Also, you can see that I'm kind of applying this to some areas and then I'm quickly wiping the paint off my brush and then using my dry brush to blend it a little bit. I kind of want this color a little bit more concentrated in the darker areas of the metallic so that I'm not taking away any of the shine from the very brightest areas. All right, here's the sword after the Caraburg Crimson's been applied. You can see it's very subtle, but it adds a very interesting dynamic to it. I told you we were going all the way from black to white, and so the last step is going to be white. So we're gonna add a little bit of ceramic white, and we're going to use this as an edge highlight. I've mixed some Lamian Medium into the white so it has a really nice flow to it. And I'm going to paint this along the edge of the sword. And then I also want to make sure that I pull it along the area where we painted that thin black line where the flat transitions to the blade because that's technically an edge as well. And doing this, we're going to be putting black right next to white. And that's going to be that final pop that's going to make the contrast of the sword as high as we can make it. Here's the sword complete. I'll go ahead and give it a twirl so you can see the edge as well. Even on the very side of the blade, we made sure that we matched the darkest part of the blade with the lightest part. And then we also did the same process with the blade on her gun as well. It's just one way of doing true metallic metals that I think has a lot of fun aspects. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, I have another one where I'm going to go through the process of how to paint and highlight the belts on this miniature in the mini wargaming vault in the link down below in the description. If you don't have a vault membership, go ahead and click the link. You can start a seven day free trial and get access to my video as well as hundreds of other videos in the mini wargaming vault. So go ahead, click the link, start your free trial and happy wargaming.